How does the alternator work on your Harley Softail? Catch you inside. Revelator L. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. If you enjoy the channel and the series of videos, please like, share, subscribe, leave those comments below, check out the website revelatoralpha.com. So in this video, I'm talking about how the alternator works on your soft tail. Now, there are essentially two types of alternator and lots of variations on the theme, but there are two types. You've got an externally mounted alternator, which you would find on a motor car and on some larger touring motorcycles. But for the most part, on all motorcycles, the, the alternator is housed within the engine casings or within the engine covers. On the Harley Softail, uh, the alternator is located on the primary side, on the left-hand side of the engine. So here's my whiteboard here. You have the uh, your V-twin uh, configuration. You have the crankshaft at the bottom, and the alternator is located at the end of the crankshaft on the primary side. So this is your primary there. Now. Uh, there's a crankshaft there and you have essentially two parts to the alternator for this uh, for this illustration anyway there is actually a third part which is the voltage uh, regulator rectifier but that will be discussed in another video so the uh, alternator comprises of two parts which is the rotor and the stator the stator is a fixed winding of copper wiring around lots of point uh, poles are uh, in a circumference around uh, the uh, crankshaft area. Now uh, that will actually induce an alternating current but not by itself. Actually you're going to have to uh, induce a current in it, you have to create a current in it and it's done that by the rotor. The rotor is actually fixed on the end of the crankshaft and in this case it's a cap like rotor. In other words it actually travels, rotates around the outside of the stator. So there's the stator in the center and the, and the rotor cap is on the outside of it like that and it spins around it and within the rotor it's got magnets on it. So as the rotor spins, as it, the magnets spin around the, the uh, windings, the coils if you like, that induces an electromagnetic induction. Now, what happens is that the faster that spins, the greater the electromagnetic induction, the greater the current, the greater the voltage uh, is produced. However, what is actually happening is that you are getting positives and negatives. You are getting uh, an increase in charge and then a decrease or a sudden, uh, for want of a better word, uh, there is a voltage created then there isn't a voltage created. Voltage created, no voltage. Positive, negative, positive, negative. And you can see where my mind is going because all of a sudden you get this kind of sine wave going along. And this is what the alternating current is. Now this current can, or voltage in, in, in voltage terms, can drive uh, AC consumers directly. But what happens is that this will all, this power, this is generated power, has to be controlled and it has to be sent to the battery, to charge the battery, and also to power the rest of the components on the motorcycle itself. So what happens is that the alternator that is now producing uh, alternating uh, current or AC voltage uh, is then that power is sent to the voltage regulator and the, the rectifier, which will, in a sense, uh, control the amount of voltage that is going to the battery and it will convert the voltage from AC alternating current to direct current. Uh, that will go uh, directly to the battery. But this is the alternate the alternator on your Harley Softail. How you access it, you have to take off the primary uh, case, you have to drain the uh, lubricant, the oil of course, take off the primary case, and you will actually locate it at the, uh, the base of the engine, at the, at the end of the crankshaft. You have two components in the alternator case itself, and that is the the rotor and the stator 
the stator is the fixed part the rotor is the rotating magnets that go around that actually induce an electromagnetic induction uh, which causes the uh, peaks and uh, peaks and troughs if you like of the voltage that is uh, created that is all sent to the voltage regulator and that is all then sent to the battery that's how it works in essence now as i said there are variations on the theme uh, different motorcycle manufacturers may have uh, slightly different methods uh, there are obviously uh, different uh, windings different winding configurations uh, different core configurations there might be differences in how much voltage is directly generated per a given rpm now there at this point at the point of creation if you like there isn't actually uh, any governance on the voltage or the current that is actually produced. Now the amount of voltage is directly proportional to the RPM of the engine. At very low RPM uh, it's spinning very slowly so there isn't a lot of electromagnetic induction going on. Therefore you might have a drain on the battery because there isn't uh, that much power being produced by the alternator, especially you have lots of consumers uh, at the same time. However, as soon as you start revving the engine, riding along, then you'll have more produced, therefore it will amply supply the battery or charge the battery, I should say as well. So there you have it. That is the uh, alternator in a very basic uh, explanation there for you. But that's essentially how it works. It's located on the left hand side. It's enclosed within the primary case of the engine. It is uh, driven by the crankshaft and you have there uh, which drives the rotor contain the magnets around the coil around the windings and that creates an electromagnetic induction which creates the alternating uh, current and then the voltage this peaks and troughs that's all sent to the uh, voltage regulator for changing okay right well i hope you found that useful so please like share subscribe leave those comments below check out the website revelatorelf.com catch you again bye